I begin this study by measuring out the dimensions for one and a half times the original sketch, which comes out to nine inches tall by five and five eight inches. What I look for are points that I can connect with a through line. For instance, the front of the hat and the shoulders, the shoulders and the back of the coat, which runs through his back leg, the edge of the shadows where they meet with the figure in the background, etc. These connections will aid me in designing an image that is similar, yet different from the original photo. As I've mentioned in the previous videos, I believe that good art isn't about copying, it is using the reference as a jumping off point to make something that's your own. I block everything in linearly, using straight-ish lines that connect to each other, almost like a connect the dots page. This is how I think about drawing in terms of painting. A drawing that exists for its own sake looks entirely different. So while I'm ideating here, exploring this palette, this mood, the simpler and more efficient I keep my design, the better. With my values pre-mixed to 6, 7, 8, and 9, I start blocking in the painting according to the four studies I had made previously. Now if you remember, value 6 is basically the darkest value value 9 would be the lightest value. So 6 is kind of a middle tone gray, 9 is just slightly darker than white, 7 and 8 are in between those two. So there were elements from each of those four studies that I liked, but ultimately it came down to ensuring that the sitting figure stands out with her white dress and dark bonnet. I intentionally keep the rest of the composition closer towards 6 and 7, reserving 8 for most of the lighter areas and 9 to really punch up the lights. I'm painting with my trusty flats of various brands. Most of the painting is completed using my Trakel flats. Towards the end, however, I switch to a Princeton brush to add the heavier value of 9. I'm working on Arches oil paper, which actually can handle a lot of paint and it layers on quite beautifully. It has a cold press finish, which, if you're familiar with watercolor paper, it's the rougher textured paper. Whereas the smaller studies were primarily about value exploration, here I am also exploring texture and paint handling. I'm beginning to think more about how this might look in color and as a larger finished painting. Will it ever get to that stage? Maybe, maybe not. With my four value studies not that far within reach, I set out to paint. Normally I paint on a toned background to help me assess the values as I paint them. But since everything is already pre-mixed, I am essentially painting by number. This isn't a bad thing. Now, the key here isn't to copy one of those studies and make it larger. I studied them all beforehand. I made mental notes about what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to change. I knew that I wanted to keep the figures on the left closer to the middle value, so I start by filling them in with values 7 and 8. Working methodically, I continue painting in the values from left to right. The key word though is shapes. As I am painting this larger study, I am keeping the shape that, by this point I have drawn at least 6 times, clear and defined. I start filling in the lighter values of the seated female, my focal point. I also take some of my value 6 to start darkening some areas of the painting, specifically her bonnet and some accents on the actual figure. Once everything is blocked in, I start applying thicker paint, sculpting it into place with my brush. This allows me to explore smaller shapes in the clothes of the standing male figure on the left and the primary seated female. After leaving it alone for two days, it still isn't dry but it has set enough that I can go in with value 9 and lay it on top of her dress and arms so that it doesn't mix. This way it retains the lightness that I'm going for and begin carving and defining her figure even more. All of this took me about one and a half hours to paint. This is a low-cost investment into thinking about what could potentially become a painting in the future. It allowed me the opportunity to explore composition, values, and rethinking the source material. If you are a young artist watching this, or someone who is just starting out, instead of copying a photo you find, challenge yourself to reinterpret it. I'm going to leave my email in the description because I would love to see what you guys are making. So. 
consider this a challenge and also a way to get some feedback. If you like this video and think your friends and family might like it too, subscribe and share it on social media. Leave me a comment telling me what you like, what you don't like, or if you think there's something I can improve upon. I am open to all suggestions. So until next week, I'm Julian Tejera. Let's go push some colored dirt.